Welcome back. So today we are finishing up our tour of the bathroom. We started way back in Roman times and we eventually got all the way up to the 21st century and I am capping the bathroom extravaganza off with a few of my favorite bathrooms. And the ones I'm going to show you today are mostly tile work because these tiled bathrooms represented some of the finest craftsmanship we had in American homes in the 20th century. So when we come back, we are going to get started. Well, we're going to start off today with a beautiful bathroom in green and black tile with white accents. Now, first of all, let's separate what is original from what is not. The sink and tub are not original. The tub in particular is a modern repro, as is the sink, although I'm not sure the sink is actually intended to be a repro of an older piece, just perhaps a classic style. The tile work is original, the medicine cabinet is original, and that cabinet that is just to the right of the shower alcove is original. Some of the things I would like you to notice is we have a mosaic tile on the floor, and on the walls we have the subway tile in that running bond pattern. What that means is, first of all, subway tiles are shaped like bricks. They're twice as long as they are wide, and that makes them very useful for things like herringbone designs. And the running bond is when one row of tile is offset half a tile from the, the row below it, so that you have staggered joints going up the wall. We will see a number of bathrooms that are tiled with subway tiles, and they use them in many different ways. The running bond is probably the standard basic, but we're going to see some very creative stuff. In particular, on this bathroom, note the beautiful work around that shower arch. Very, very nice. It's a simple color scheme, but the quality of the tile is what makes this bathroom shine. Here we have another bathroom in green tile. Now, what we have here is two shades of green, uh, a sort of medium dark green and a very pale green, and there are yellow accents. Very pretty work. And just take a look at how this has been done. We have subway tiles right down uh, near the floor where the baseboard molding would be and the subway tiles are not laid on the horizontal as we're accustomed to seeing it. They're laid on the vertical and then there are half tiles above it creating that zigzag design. Also note we have a tiny pinstripe which appears to be black running around the tile. I have no idea if that is original I have not seen that on other bathrooms, so I think perhaps it might not be. But this is just lovely. Essentially, we've got two colors. The yellow accent is very small. And the beauty, the interest in this bathroom comes from the fact that the tiles are laid out in very interesting ways. The wall tiles are laid out on the diagonal. And of course, I mentioned the subway tiles down at the baseboard. Let's take a look at another view of this bathroom, which I think is going to show you the colors a little better. Well, here we go. And of course, it has a yellow toilet here. And you can clearly see the yellow in 
that little accent row of tiles near the top. When you put that yellow toilet next to it, it stands out. There are some nice touches here, including the half arch over this bathroom alcove, which is reminiscent of that half arch over the tub enclosure. Very interesting, very pretty, too much white for me, but what can I say? I really don't like when people simply default to white because they don't know how to handle the tiles. I would much rather they just did a little research and looked at what people were doing with these tiles when they were new. Here is another bathroom in subway tile. And if you'll notice, they're very creative in the way they've laid out the tiles. Most of this is being done in a running bond. But then in the inset panels in the shower, they're using the tiles to create a herringbone pattern. And along the border area, and that would be the area between the herringbone tiles and the black border tiles, the subway tiles are laid on the vertical. It's as if they are following that border around the room. Very, very nice tile work. We can see a little bit of the floor too. And the floor is also this sort of corally orange and black. Sink here is new. Tub appears old. So we've got an older bathroom that's had some renovation. This next one is just wonderful. Blue and black tiles. There is a tiny bit of yellow in the border tile above those black diamonds. I don't know if you can see, but they picked that up in the wall color, which was great. That was a nice touch. It's very likely that's how the bathroom would have been done originally. And please note, the sink is, is new, by the way. But please note this wonderful little corner shelf that's built in and it's got a tile surface. It's just lovely. And also notice the zigzag pattern in this bathroom down at the baseboard area. Instead of being drawn up into the wall, it's being pulled across into the floor. Very interesting. Okay. Now, this is almost enough to make me wish I never complained about white walls. This is an old bathroom. The sink and tub are both old. The toilet looks old, but I can't get a very good look at it. So these are original pieces. We have what is essentially a green and pink bathroom if we go by the fixtures and the tile. The things that we wouldn't be changing in a bathroom like this. There's a border around the edge of the green tile. It looks to be rather more brown than pink, but the homeowners have gone ahead and picked up the pink and put that on the walls. I would not have gone with such a strong pink. I'm, I'm glad they didn't use white. It doesn't matter to me that it's pink, but rather than going with a strong pink, I would have moved several shades lighter because that, boy, that, that pink is hard on the eyes. Still, it's definitely better than white. And notice they put a little dressing table in the corner of this bathroom. That's a nice touch because if you'll recall from the original 1930s bathrooms, they had dressing tables in them. That was a common feature in the bathroom. Now, this is the beginnings of an absolutely amazing Art Deco bathroom. But unfortunately, it's been rather mishandled. We have an incredible built-in sink. That countertop is enclosing the little sink bowl. For some reason, the homeowners installed bathtub fittings instead of sink fittings over this sink. No idea why anybody would do that. Strikes me as odd, but hey, not my bathroom. Oh, they have a dresser. By the way, the dresser is not the worst part of this. The unicorn vase sitting on top of the dresser is. 
and they should be taken out and shot for that alone. We have wonderful stepped cornice molding here, but unfortunately, it kind of blends in because everything is all white. Notice the doors on the cabinets on either side of the sink. Beautiful Art Deco lines, but again, it's all white, hard to see it. The mirror is two pieces and it's etched glass. And then we have this fantastic structure, the, this outline. Now, you're going to hear this outline called Chrysler Building. And we're gonna go over to that in a minute. Just suffice it to say, Chrysler Building is wrong. So this is a fantastic bathroom that could be an Art Deco masterpiece if it were taken in the right direction. So I would love to see a bathroom like this seriously revamped. And the truth is all it would cost is the removal of the dresser and that unicorn vase, plus a little bit of paint. Now, Chrysler building. This is the Chrysler building. And it was built in uh, the Art Deco area. I believe they started it in uh, 29 and finished it in 31, somewhere in there. This was a major influence in Streamline Modern, American Art Deco. However, if you will be observant, you will know that that is not the profile we saw in that last bathroom. And those of you from New York are probably already several steps ahead of me. This is the profile. This is 500 Fifth Avenue a building built during the same period. Let me give you a little bit of a view of the top. That is a design you will see over and over again in these bathrooms. This wonderful silhouette. And there is no mistaking it. That silhouette is 500 Fifth Avenue. And let's just take a quick look at that again. I'll show you some better pictures when you can see it head on, but yes, there is no mistaking that. Well, this is another green and black bathroom. And if you'll notice the tiles in this bathroom, they are not subway tiles. They are square tiles. They were about four inches by four inches. And it was customary for them to be laid one atop the other like this so that the grout seams form a checkerboard design. In general, these tiles were not offset one row to the next. In this bathroom, the bathtub appears to be original, as do the soap dishes and the towel holders. And unfortunately, it really looks like that mirror all over the place is original as well by the way it's been attached. We see the reflection of the ceiling, which has this strange chintz print on it. And we see some lighting fixtures that are not period to the bathroom. In general, what has been done to this bathroom has not been done in good taste. But since we're focusing on the original tile work, yeah, that tile work is really nice. It's simple, but this is the classic tile design that you will see through probably somewhere in the late 20s, right up through the 60s. Now this, oh my, so much pink, so little time. This is interesting. Of course, we have a dreadful dresser affair here, that strange serpentine thing with a bowl that is not a uh, period to this bathroom, certainly not original. It's, it's unfortunate because if you remove the sink, what you've got left is a very nice tile job, really sweet. I think the sink takes a lot away from it couple of things to notice. The reason it's not a good idea to paint the ceiling the same color as the walls, even though I do like the fact that they've gone with a paler shade of pink, is because 
this ceiling is angled and you lose that when it's all painted the same color. If the ceiling had been white, there would be a contrast because you'd have a clear line between the angled wall and the ceiling. The built-in cabinet probably would have been originally painted pink, as we know, but I'm not upset that it's painted white because frankly, there's a little too much pink in this room. The light fixtures may or may not be original. They are period and they are a matched set, but it's possible they were installed later. Um, nevertheless, I like them and they do well in this bathroom, especially because of that amber glass oval that's above the built-in cabinet. Now, that's something interesting and because I'm only seeing a small portion of this room and in fact, a small portion of the house, I can only really speculate. It is possible that the tub alcove is behind that cabinet, behind that wall, and they have put in the glass to allow some light to enter. It's also possible that that is allowing light to enter a hall that has no windows. But the fact that it's amber glass, it's in a bathroom, clearly it was meant to distribute light from one place with a lot of light, and that would be the bathroom, to another place, the, the area behind the wall that cabinet is on, that doesn't have a lot of light. Rather an old fashioned method of dealing with things. A few things worth noting is, please note the cove tiles down at the baseboard area. This is when the tile was is shaped like an L. Part of the tile was attached to the wall. The other part was attached to the floor. It gave you a, a joint free area between the wall and floor, made it very easy to clean. And also notice that after going up a single row of pink tiles, there is also another border tile in there. In this case, it appears to be gold, but I'm not really sure about that. It's Some of these pictures get very grainy when you try to go in close enough to catch the details. The towel bars, the robe holders, are very, very attractive. Uh, they were high-end for the time. They were not your ordinary you know, nondescript towel bars, and certainly they are original to this bathroom. What I would do with a bathroom like this is, frankly, I would paint the ceiling white and then I'd just, well, I'd get rid of the sink too. I, I have to say, I would do that. I would pull that sink and put a period sink in there. And then I would let it go because this is just very sweet the way it is. And speaking of period sinks, let's take a look at this bathroom sink. It's over on the left. This is a sink that has a counter built around it. At first blush, it looks like we just have a very long sink here. No, no, they have a tiled counter around it and the tile is the same sort of off-white shade as the sink and it just, it just makes it look like it's one integrated unit. Uh, that tells us a couple of things. One, this is probably from the 50s, but we have other reasons to believe that we'll get into in a minute and that they intended to provide a lot of counter space but clearly did not have the idea of putting a cabinet under the sink and we've talked about that before that was something that just it, it wasn't in their heads to do it during this period we have a really nice mosaic floor and the walls are green and black. They are not porcelain tile. This is vitriolite. This is glass tile. And these vitriolite sheets are one foot by two foot in some areas. It looks like they're one foot by three foot in others. All glass tile. Very smooth look. And you can tell 
from the reflections. You're not seeing a lot of grout joints. Also notice we have our 505th Avenue doorway. Like I said, we're going to be seeing a lot of that. And even though this is a 1950s bathroom, we know that for certain because of the vitriolite. We're still seeing that Art Deco influence. Very nice bathroom, original fixtures. Uh, the walls above the vitriolite tile are painted gray. You can tell because of that small section of cornice you can see in the middle of the room. I don't know if I would have chosen gray for the walls, but hey, it's not white, so I'm happy. Also, the mirror over the sink is wonderful. That is five separate panes of mirror. There is that peaked mirror in the center, uh, a strip of mirror on either side housing the fluorescent fixtures, and then on either side beyond that, there are two more sections of mirror to expand the mirror to cover the full length of that sink with the countertop. It is possible there are three separate medicine cabinets behind those mirrors. The mirrors on the side would have opened out toward the center, which would create uh, almost a circle of mirrors around you. They often call those shaving mirrors because you can really see your reflection, the reflection of your entire face. And that was a popular mirror style in bathrooms in the 1950s, but you had to have a good sized bathroom because these mirrors were quite large. Oh my, here we go, another 1950s bathroom, yummy. Once again, the wall above the tiles and the ceiling have both been painted out in pink. And as I've said, that's a bad idea because you lose so much of the detail when it's all the same color. The thing that's interesting about this bathroom is these tiles. The tiles are in two shades of pink. The darker shade of pink is ribbed and they're laid to form stripes going across the room. There are little tiny thin tile strips of black in between the pinks. Very, very nice. In fact, at first I wasn't sure if that had been grout or if that was tile strips until I actually spotted a piece of missing tile in the picture here. It's like, oh yeah, okay, now we know what that is. Very creative tile job really nicely done. And of course, we have that 1940s era squared off bathtub that the bathtub itself was a square, sometimes with a cut off corner. And then the bathing area was laid into that square on the diagonal. This is a nice bathroom, very, very 50s. Oh my, Okay, this is a wonderful tile job, but the bathroom is just too cutesy for my taste. The sink and the toilet are new. The towel holder and we have what I believe is a toothbrush holder are also uh, vintage. The toilet paper holder is vintage. So that's uh, probably what we're looking at in terms of original. Also, uh, the mirror in the medicine cabinet, that's probably original too. Everything else is an add-on. And I could probably tolerate all of this, including those totally inappropriate light fixtures, if it wasn't for that horrid little silhouette next to the window hanging from the robe rack that pushes it over the top into cotton candy, give me a stomach ache, cute. So, no, I would like to see something else done with this bathroom, but the tile job is gorgeous. All right, here we go. These are homeowners who knew what they were doing. What we have here in terms of the tile work is a blue and black wall, black and white floor. 
The sink looks original. I'm not sure about the toilet, possibly. The toilet paper holder is probably original. The towel rack is not. I'm not sure about the medicine cabinet. I love the fact that they slapped yellow paint above this. This is what would have been done at the time. And also, not satisfied with throwing yellow in, they have a pink hamper and a pink towel in there just to throw in an additional splash of color. And let's take a look at where the color comes from. This is that little valance they have above the window. That's probably no more than an eighth of a yard of fabric. Totally mid-century, and it's got all their colors in it. Black, white, blue, yellow, and even that tiny splash of pink. So these are people who really worked to make their bathroom look like it would have looked back in the mid-century. Kudos to them. This one, what this is, is just a wonderful blue and pink bathroom. The tile work is great. And again, we're focusing on the tile work. It's absolutely wonderful. We have this beautiful sort of turquoise blue completely surrounding the bathtub. And there is a little inset tile, a border uh, just below the black border around the top of the tiling. And we have this fabulous Art Nouveau panel in uh, the tub enclosure. The bathroom was clearly originally pink, green, and black. Those are our colors. And the homeowners have stuck with it. The uh, soap dishes are wonderful. The towel holders, these are wonderful. These were original pieces. And please note the little cabinet that is running alongside of the tub enclosure with that mirrored door. Nice touch. The lighting fixtures are terrible. And I would pay somebody money if they could sneak me into that bathroom so that I could throw away that Rococo light switch cover on the far left. Ew. Otherwise, this is great. They've done a good job with the pink they've took they took it a couple of shades lighter than the porcelain fixtures, which is good. That was the mistake that the other bathroom in pink and green made. This time they went lighter, and that works. That's why this works and the other one didn't. So let's take a quick look at our Art Nouveau lady. That is beautiful, and we saw a lot of that in bathrooms uh, around the mid-century from, say, the 30s to the 60s. And remember, we saw it again in the 90s. So it's a, it's a sort of motif that's coming back to us. Well, this next bathroom is not only painted in white, and I don't despise it, I actually like it. What we have in terms of the tile work is those same 4x4 four four tiles we've seen before, but this time they're in a running bond pattern, so the seams from one row to another are offset. Uh, as I mentioned before, they were very creative in their use of tile, and we'll see a lot of different configurations like this. Overall, this bathroom is green and black, but the walls are painted white, and the reason I don't hate it is because of these wonderful leaded glass windows. The windows are primarily frosted glass, but the accents are with green glass and the black caming. So what we have is a great consistency throughout this bathroom. Very attractive, and with so much to occupy your eyes. The white just doesn't stand out. So I really like the way this bathroom has been done. The fixtures, the sink, the tub, all original, along with that wonderful soap holder in the tub area. The 
soap holder by the sink appears to be a chrome piece that would have been brought in a good deal later, perhaps in the 40s or 50s. So, overall, nice job. Well, another almost floor-to-ceiling tile job. Black and two shades of yellow. And we have the tile going all the way up to the top of the windows. And then they painted the upper portion of the wall the same yellow as the tile in the upper section. Because we've got two shades of yellow here along with the black. Great tile job. Instead of using uh, a decorative border tile, they've pretty much created their own just by recutting the black and gray tiles to form this diamond pattern. I like it. I think it's very nicely done, but it just goes to show you that a good tile setter, even with very limited materials, can come up with a great job. Okay, subway tiles once again here, and they are laid in a running bond pattern. We have a black OG edge up at the top, and then two tiles down we have a thin pinstripe of black. Also, the upper section of the wall has been painted out in green, not white. It's a much lighter shade of green, does a very good job, and I like the way they have done this bathroom. Now, the real point of interest is down here by the floor, and let me show you a close-up. That wonderful tile in the baseboard area. Now, what this is, is a black cove tile that has been topped by a black tile with that little, I don't know what I would call that. Um, it's sort of like an arrowhead pattern. And it seems to work seamlessly. The black blends into the black baseboard tile. The green blends into the subway tile, giving a very, very pretty design. 500 Fifth Avenue yet again. In this case, it's a light blue tile with the black accents. The Towel bars and soap dish are integrated into the tile wall. They are original. Uh, hard to say when this bathroom dates from because we're not seeing anything except this arch. And the arch could have been as early as the 30s or as late as the 50s. But I did want you to see this just so you could see how ubiquitous this particular design was back in the middle of the 20th century. And this one. Now, this is magnificent. This is blue and black from floor to ceiling. Even the ceiling has been tiled. When we look at, uh, first of all, the sink is apparently a new sink. I would say that is a replacement. When we look at the cabinetry, ordinarily, I would expect that would have been painted to match the tiles, but I have to say, in this bathroom, the idea of any more blue or black would just be overwhelming. So I'm fine with the fact that they painted this out in white. It's very interesting. The, the light fixtures do not appear to be original. The one over the sink might be, it's hard to tell, but the two over the mirror on this built-in vanity table are certainly not. When they put in the ceiling, this is a cove ceiling. When they put this in with tile, they really had to know what they were doing because I find it hard to imagine a more difficult tile job than matching up those curves. But they did it. They did it beautifully. I think this is a great bathroom. Here we have another pink and green bathroom. We have subway tiles. They're laid in that running bond pattern that we're used to. We have a very large border. And between 
the little black and white tiles at the lower part of the border and then the large white tiles above it's the border seems it gives the border more prominence the pink wall the color is good this is the kind of pale pink that you want to use in combination with green like this it's not at all overwhelming I would dare to guess that at some point the fixtures in this bathroom the sink the tub uh, the toilet were probably all pink this sink by the way is new not an old one this is a bathroom that was done in very much the same way it would have originally been done so kudos to these homeowners well here we have another beautiful batch of tiling and the tiling of course is against white walls it's a serious mistake here because this also has a coved ceiling like that blue tile bathroom we just saw but you can't tell because the wall color goes right into the ceiling color the way to deal with that frankly is you leave the white ceiling alone drop a picture rail molding six to eight inches below the ceiling level and then paint everything below that in another color they could have easily gone with a pale yellow a pale green would have looked very nice would not have been too much color for the modern eye the tiling here is interesting it's not anything we haven't seen before except with the inclusion of the sink built into this countertop and two cabinets on either side and that's interesting that is telling me this is very likely a 1950s bathroom possibly even going into the later 50s because prior to that the idea of cabinetry mixed in with the sink it, it just really wasn't their thing now I very much wish I had a better photo of this bathroom it's blue and yellow but the tiling is very interesting we have subway tiles starting at the bottom working our way up there's a row of subway tiles at the baseboard level then we have the four by four tiles laid one tile over another coming up to these diagonally cut tiles to create that zigzag design then as we move up into the yellow portion these are subway tiles laid on the vertical and they are accented with little tiny bits of tile um, little tile slivers really and it's every other tile making it appear to be stripes running down the side of the tile wall there is a very nice little strip of green and yellow tile running along the top where we're coming up to our border this is all really about the tile job very simple tiles but they put it together in a very interesting way also quickly note that we have soap holders over the sink by the way the sink is new soap holders over the sink in that same green tile as the bottom and our floor is of the same color only with hexagonal tiles okay black and yellow this is not the first black yellow and white bathroom we have seen the tiling in here is very interesting especially as it goes around the curve of the tub enclosure I like it in combination with the black sink and the black tub presumably there's a black toilet as well I do not mind the white in this bathroom primarily because the area where the sink is located that's probably where the toilet is and that has got to be a very small confined space and I would have to say if there were much more color in this bathroom it would probably be very claustrophobic so the white I am forgiving also please notice 
the fixture over the sink as this looks to be original. Well, I am no fan of pink in general, but I love this little bathroom. This is just a very, very basic pink bathroom with a maroon border tile and the soap dishes, the towel bar, the toilet paper holder, and the fixtures are maroon. Beautiful, simple color scheme. We've got a, a mosaic tile floor that's picking up the colors, although there seems to be some gray in it too. This is wonderful. Now, of course, if I had that bathroom in my home, that 1970s light fixture over the mirror would go into the trash Along with that shelf over the toilet, I would definitely find something more interesting there. And I would put up a wallpaper. Because the bathroom is pink and maroon, I would not go with a floral paper. That would be a little overkill. But this is a tiny, tiny bathroom. And there's no reason it shouldn't be a real gem. By the way, you can tell how small the bathroom is because you can see the person taking the photograph reflected in the mirror. They are standing in the tub just outside of camera range. This is probably one of the nicest pink bathrooms I've ever seen. And it's because these deep maroon fixtures are really setting that pink off beautifully. Well, now we are moving in to retro bathrooms. Most of these are black and white because people putting in retro bathrooms seem to think black and white is de rigueur. That's what they're going to do. So let's take a look at this shower. Once again, 500 Fifth Avenue. I'm sure you recognize it at this point. And I don't believe that this uh, shower stall is tiled. I really can't tell. Uh, I don't see tile markings. So it's very likely this is simply painted onto an acrylic uh, shower stall. Still, they have that sort of art deco thing in mind for this. And for some reason, people believe Art Deco is black and white. Now, we are assuming this is because when they've seen pictures of Art Deco, they have been black and white photographs because they didn't have color photography. But as we know from having seen bathrooms from the 20s and the 30s, they were anything but black and white. Nevertheless, I thought you would like to take a look at these retro bathrooms because the new colors for bathrooms, 21st century bathrooms are black and white. So let's take a look at how to do it with a little style. This bathroom, I am not sure if the whole thing is retro, if some of it is original, hard to tell. Uh, the tub appears to be original. Some of the tile setting techniques on this. In particular, the wider band, that pinstriping in black, that wider band is available now. Uh, it was available years ago, but it wasn't as popular. They probably would have done a thinner pinstripe. Also, subway tile laid in a running bond pattern. Mm. Yes, that happened, but usually they would have taken advantage of the subway tile and done a few different things with it. Another thing that leads me to believe this might be a retro job is notice the seam between the floor and the bathtub. That's not even. And that suggests that there might have been a floor laid and an old bathtub retrofit on top of it. Not sure, hard to tell. If I had to guess, I would say because I know the sink is new, I know the toilet is new, I believe the tub is old. Guessing, I would say, the tile work 
is probably not as old as it looks and may well have been redone at some point. So I'm just going to default to calling this a retro bathroom, but with that caveat, it could be original. This is, this is a thing now. There are a lot of bathrooms like this. They're trying to capture that Art Deco look uh, without having a clear understanding of the fact that Art Deco was, uh, it was like an English country garden, every color you could imagine just jumping out at you. Now, this is another one. This is uh, a tile job. As you can see, the thin tiles are not as thin as they were. Certainly not as thin as they were in the 30s, not as thin as they were in the 50s. So I'm going to say I believe this one to be a retro bathroom rather than an original tile job. Certainly we can tell from all of that shower stuff hanging around by the tub faucets that this is something that is at least, uh, it has at least been refitted for modern use. Again, black and white, not a spot of color. Now this one is interesting. I believe this to be an older tile job. And the sink is old, by the way. Um, and you can always tell when a sink is old, when there are two faucet holes, and each faucet has the water coming directly out of it. There are no mixers. And we've discussed this. The mixer was not available back then. So I would look at this and say the tiling and the sink are old. Other things, that uh, tile bar to the left, those are heated tile bars. Clearly, that is not old. Uh, that's a modern convenience. But notice the border on the floor, the way it comes around the sink. That was expensive tile work to have that done that way. This is, well, I can't say floor to ceiling because I don't see the ceiling. But the tile obviously goes up at least six feet in this bathroom. And once again, not a lick of color. This is definitely retro. Uh, there are a lot of things that tell me that the tiles on the floor are new. These are marble tiles, uh, and that's just not a style they used back in the day. When they were doing mosaics like this, they rarely did random mosaics. That was very rare. There would be a lot of color in, but it would be a repeating pattern. It wouldn't be random like this. Also, they were less inclined to use marble in small tiles. If they used marble, it was usually in larger slabs because marble was expensive. So, now, now I'm gonna I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say this is completely retro. Notice, even though. This is not uh, an old bathroom. We still have the vestiges of that 500 Fifth Avenue building in the area above the tub. Uh, tub and sink are both new. The medicine cabinet is new. They have a very interesting ceiling line here. And notice it jumps out at you because they have painted the upper section of wall in a sort of pale mint green. A little bit of color has been brought into this bathroom. Not enough so that it keeps it from being black and white, but enough so that you can see the details of the room that are worth noting. Okay, this one. This is an old tile job. Uh, the, the floor tiles and the way they are installed, that's old. The wall tiles also, uh, even though this is the this common subway tile in a running bond. No, this is an older tile job. We have the built-in toilet paper holder. That sink is very old. 
when we look at that sink, we're looking at about 1910, I would guess. The toilet obviously is new. Overall, this is a nice looking bathroom because I like the old sink and I like the old tile. But again, no color, not a drop of color. It's like they feel constrained to eliminate any traces of color in these bathrooms. It would not have been that way originally, as we know. Okay, this is clearly retro. We have a modern shower stall. We have modern tile on the floor. And we can tell from that variegated marble pattern. And the wallpaper, though, that's just a little over the top for my taste. I understand these people like their bathrooms black and white, but I think they're taking it to extremes in this bathroom. There are broad strips, both at the top and the bottom of this wallpaper area, that are just black. That is not black tile. That's black. I'm assuming it's black paint on the walls. Um, I don't know. That's This one is just a little too obviously retro for me. And finally, um, because this is the last of these tiled bathrooms that we're going to take a look at with one exception, we have another of our 500 Fifth Avenue bathrooms. All original tub, toilet, sink. I can see a corner of the toilet, so I know that's original too. Beautiful bathroom. I don't know why they put that, that chest of drawers in behind the sink. I'd love it if they would make that go away. But I did want to close off with a final example of that 500 Fifth Avenue design. Now this one, this is not tile. But when I was talking about those black and white bathrooms, this is a black and white bathroom I like. Now, this is an illustration, and it's an illustration of a much older bathroom. We have a black and white marble floor. We have a black marble sink, the white tub, white toilet, white wainscoting. This is just painted beadboard with a black baseboard molding down at the bottom. And the wallpaper is black and white, very simple. But they've brought some color in. And it's interesting to see how this, this evolved. They have a little lacquered Asian cabinet in the corner behind the tub. And that's probably the inspiration for this design. Because by adding these, this green, and this is sort of a mint green, and red, they've created a rather Asian feel in this bathroom, despite the fact that the only thing that's Asian is that little cabinet. The red towel bar, that's a Victorian piece that's been painted red. The shelves on either side of the mirror, that's Victorian fretwork, painted red and green. Uh, the shelf underneath the mirror, again, painted green. The mirror frame is painted green. They've painted the underside of the tub. They've got the little scatter rugs. There's a tiny little pinstripe of green running around the top of the beadboard molding and a thin strip, presumably ribbon, on the curtains of both red and green. They've brought some color into it. And I think this makes a much more appealing bathroom, even though fundamentally this is a black and white bathroom. No mistake about it. So, Yesterday, I had a lot of fun with my project bathroom, so I grabbed one of the tile bathrooms, one of them that I felt looked truly unfinished, but was beautiful nonetheless. I love this one. This lavender and yellow and sort of turquoise blue, this is just yummy, and this is so 1930s. It's so just exuberant with its color. Please note that there is a little tiny built-in cabinet in the little corner jog between the tub and the toilet. Let me show you a close-up of that so you can see that a little better. It's just built-in, tucked away. And when I saw the close-up, 
what I thought was a window above it may in fact actually be a cabinet. That was something we discussed when we were looking at, at bathrooms in the 1910s, 1920s, that the medicine cabinet wasn't over the sink. We're accustomed to that. They were not. So I think that might be a bathroom cabinet. Anyway, I decided I was going to devote a brief period of time, and I do mean brief, to redo this bathroom because it needs something. So I threw the terms Art Nouveau wallpaper lilac yellow into Google, and this is what I came up with. It's an interesting paper. It's literally the first one I found on that search. And it's got a border on it. I'm not crazy about the border, but here. I threw the border on the top. Frankly, I don't like it on the top either. This is what that bathroom needs. It needs some color on the upper walls. Now, of course, if it were my bathroom, uh, because I have some serious issues about these things, I would probably spend six or eight months combing through every wallpaper book on the planet before I made the decision. But this is what, and, and I'm not kidding about how quick this was, 30 seconds on the internet. And there you go. I think it's a serious improvement. Oh, I should also mention, I would get rid of those yellow towels and replace them with something else. I'd have to give a little thought to what I would replace them with, but the yellow against the yellow, no, there's no impact on that. All right, so that was my little project bathroom. Ah, oh, how I wish I had the real bathroom to play with. That would be so much fun because this is a beautiful, beautiful bathroom. So this is what I have for you today. We are going to move on to something else next weekend. I've gotten a lot of suggestions about what you'd like to see in a series coming up next. So it's going to be one of those I haven't decided which yet. For those of you who join us for the Just Chatting series, we are coming back this evening with Just Chatting. For those of you who just do our weekend thrifting and home improvement, etc., etc., videos, we will be back next weekend. We're going to take a look at a slideshow on the way out and have a terrific day.